welcome to my video where I cover patch 12.4 and the most common champion matchups you saw in pro play. I take notes on all four major regions. I post a video every day. Later today, my video will be up in regards to what occurred in the LPL, LEC, and LCS. Um, but that video will just be all one, um, depending on how the LEC series goes. But um, more about this video, which is why you're here. So I take the notes, and not only the notes of what happens in the game, but the champions picked. And then I say, oh, well, it's interesting to see how a matchup unfolds across all four major regions versus how it unfolds at a plat plus level in solo queue and a challenger level in solo queue. Obviously, there are tons of different variables that go into play into why a matchup goes the way it does, ranging from the player's skill level to the player's, you know, comfort, comfort on the champion, the jungler, I mean, tons of different things. So, um, obviously, like, that does not come into play in here. Um, and I'm not factoring that in. I'm just looking at it within a vacuum. And that's why, you know, sometimes things can get kind of iffy. Um, the reason why 12.4 is happening now, if you're used to the Western Leagues, where we've seen 12.5 be played in the LCS for weeks now, and the LEC... Um, well, LPL stopped the regular season today, um, this morning, they played their final game and, um, it was 12.4. So those matchups had to be accounted for in here. Um, we saw 31 different champions used in top lane during this patch, which is pretty incredible. That's why the solo lanes in this video are, you know, not, you know, the, I mean, jungle, there was like, I think I could have, could write down like 10 different, um, champion matchups here and i don't know if i will or not yet i'm not that far yet in the video but i could because i only include the stats on the matchups that occurred at least a double digit amount of time so enough of my blabbering um most common top matchup was gwen versus nar we saw it 20 times i believe it was one of the top matchups last last patch too um gwen 65 percent win rate um and you'll see here nar also struggled against graves nar in general struggled this patch it was the go-to tank, but against carries, people, it, it struggled. Whether it was Gwen, which is more of a finesse carry, or Graves, which is more of just a, you know, a damage carry in the top lane. Um, now, you see in a situation when you look at um, solo queue, uh, Nar is better than these guys because uh, it takes a little bit more, I mean, skill to operate Gwen, for sure, and Graves as well. And Graves, more often than not, is, is in the jungle in um, solo queue, so not oftentimes do we see him flex to top lane there. Um, and, I mean, that, that's kind of how it was for Nar in 12.4. Um, Akali versus Gwen also occurred 10 times, as you see here. Akali winning six of those matchups and also being the better champion in plat and challenger. Not surprised Akali's been around a while um, where Gwen is not. So, I mean, it takes longer for people to get used to Gwen. And obviously, I mean, both champions are skill-based champions. So I guess, you know, you really think about it when people went Gwen. Um, Akali was picked into her and um, did fairly well. Um, the other three matchups that occurred um, a good amount of times that, I mean, I didn't, obviously, I said there have to be double digits for me to even go through with this because eight matchups, I mean, yeah, 10 isn't much more than eight, but eight is definitely not enough to, you know, write home about. Um, Graves versus Gwen, obviously. Um, Graves and Gwen are up here all over the place, so it makes sense. Trindamir, Trindamir was picked or banned a lot. Um, Trindamir dominated the NAR matchup. I want to say it started off 7 for 7, and maybe the last matchup NAR beat Trindamir. Or it can be the complete opposite. Somehow, some way, that matchup is very skewed one way. Um, and then Graves Jace, which we saw a lot last patch as well. I don't believe it was up here, I believe it was in this range as well. But, um, uh, you know, carry-based champions on both sides makes sense um, as a match in the top lane. So, um, yeah, top lane for 12.4 was mainly a NAR patch with some Graves and Gwen and um, Akali sprinkled in. So, thank you for watching. Oh, well, I was going to say thank you for watching. This video is over, but it's not. Um, we're going to go on to the jungle now. All right, now with the um, jungle portion of this video, we have clearly, like I said in the top, I didn't know if I was going to write them all down, but I did in the end. Um, we have a lot written here. So um, a lot of matchups occurred more than 10 times. We have 26 times Hecarim versus Injali, Sim versus Injal, 
You see Zin Zhao is here a lot. Um, Lee Sin, Hecarim, uh, Viego, Volley Bear. Um, I mean, that the meta was kind of all over the place in the jungle. Um, it was kind of the same rotation of five or six champions. Um, Hecarim and Zin Zhao was pretty much a draw. Um, that was Hecarim's weakest um, matchup at all, um, which we'll get to. Um, so, Zin Zhao, um, I mean, very popular. Did well against Elise Sin, 69% win rate, 50-50 against Hecarim. Um, as far as solo queue goes, Zin Zhao is superior over Lee Sin and Hecarim, which is kind of odd um, in the Hecarim way, because I think Hecarim is uh, easier to you know use than Zin Zhao, at least in terms of trying to carry a game. Whereas um, I, I could see Lee Sin, because Lee Sin has a lot to do with what his teammates can do off of his... Um, and kicks and ward jumps and things like that. Um, you know, Lee Sin requires some help where Hecarim, I imagine, could should be able to carry by itself. Um, which is evident here in the Lee Sin Hecarim matchup. Um, in solo queue, Hecarim has a stronger win rate. Um, and uh, Hecarim actually beats Lee Sin. It also beats Viego um, in its next most common matchup and beats Viego in solo queue. So Hecarim. Very strong this patch. Um, like I mean, like I said in the beginning, Zin Zhao is its weakest matchup on this board, and it was 50-50. So if you picked Hecarim and you banned Zin Zhao, you had a better than 50-50 chance of winning um, versus Lee Sin and Viego. Lee Sin, I mean, struggled this patch. Um, did not have, I think it lost all three times it's on here. Um, lost big against Zin Zhao, lost 68% of the times against Hecarim. Um, excuse me. Um, 13 times Volley Bear played Zin Zhao and uh, 12 times Viego played Zin Zhao. Both times those champions having superior win rates. Um, so Zin Zhao was good against Lee Sin, which is clearly the weakest champion on this patch um, out of these, you know, top tier jungle picks. Um, Volley Bear winning at a plat level, losing at a challenger level big time. 67% of the time Zin Zhao won at a challenger level. Um, and as far as Viego goes, Viego struggled in solo queue in, um, the Hecarim matchups as well as Lee Sin and later on Volley Bear. So I'm not surprised that Viego, um, is losing in solo queue versus the Zin Zhao, um, which I have here. Lee Sin versus Viego was a draw, um, at both the pro play level and, uh, plat level, obviously only 12 matchups. So six, six. Um, Lee Sin and Viego. So Lee Sin's strongest matchup and um, Viego's weakest. Um, Lee Sin has a slight win rate advantage at challenger level. Makes sense. Viego being a carry champion um, and it's hard to just navigate. I mean, you're kind of at the will of the opponent's draft and how well the opponent's playing for your Viego to um, succeed. Um, and then 11 times we saw Trundle against Zin Zhao. So Trundle was a good matchup against Zin Zhao, winning 73% of the time. However, there aren't a lot of Trundles in solo queue. So when somebody goes Trundle, uh, more often than not, they probably stink at the champion. So they're not winning at a solo queue level with him. And then uh, Volley Bear and Viego, um, if they went Volley Bear first to try and answer and say go Zin Zhao, people would respond by going Viego. Viego winning that matchup 64% of the time. Solo queue, it's a draw. And at uh, challenger level, Volley Bear is superior, which makes sense. Um, Volley Bear being very, very tanky. Um, so the jungle meta was a lot more interesting than top. I mean, top was pretty much Graves, Nar, and uh, Gwen in a little bit of a Kali, where this is clearly Hecarim, Zin Zhao, Lee Sin, um, Viego, Volley Bear, uh, Trundle. Um, I mean, it, it's all over the place with those fewer champions. And, I mean, not a lot of bands were coming out for jungle. It was kind of like, okay, well, pick whatever jungler you want, and we're going to respond with ours and however we feel about it. Um, Going Zin Zhao first, which is the most common one, or going Zin Zhao into any other champion was a mistake, unless you were kind of coin flipping a Hecarim matchup, which, I mean, is, is respectable. You can you can coin flip. But if they went Lee Sin first, or um, Volley Bear, Viego, Trundle, Zin Zhao was not the answer in uh, pro play level. Um, definitely not. And uh, Lee Sin the same way. Lee Sin was, a, was a, a coin flip against Viego, but every other time you could pick anything you want into Lee Sin, out, I mean, Zin Zhao. You pick Zin Zhao into Lee Sin, you're fine. Um, you win 69% of the time. So the jungle matchups were 
very interesting. This was interesting to, to go through um, compared to top lane and now to kind of scale back into a solo lane you know portion of this video mid lane is going to be a lot more like top lane but uh yeah let's let's get into it all right with mid matchups um like i said like top lane um there isn't as much here as the jungle role but oh by the way i missed this this is a new thing i did for top lane where i said there are 31 champions i forgot to do it for jungle uh jungle had 13 different champions used during 12.4 mid lane had 23 um a lot less than the 31 for top lane um but getting into this you clearly see that we have a lot of ari and rise in this patch um yeah, it was ari and the answers how did people want to respond because ari dominated in um solo queue as you see here winning every matchup at both a plat and challenger level um and the rise really struggling in solo queue um but you know having its advantages in pro play um as evident here, well, as evident, evident is a word, as shown here. So, Vex, strong win rate against Ari, 60%. Um, Rise in Ari was a draw um, at 14, 7, and 7. Um, however, if someone went Rise and they didn't want to coin flip with Ari, some people tried to respond with Oriana or Rise into Oriana. Um, the handshake matchup, if you will, of control mages. Um, Rise coming out ahead 57% of the time. Obviously, Rise offers more than Oriana at every level um, because of the Realm Warp. Um, but if people said, okay, fine, well, you want to go Rise, we're not going to handshake it. We're going to go Galio. Now we can respond to your Realm Warp with our own global ultimate. Um, Galio having a stronger win rate against Rise coming out on top um, at every level. So that's because Galio can just do a lot more than Rise in game. You can go different ways. Um, tank rise obviously being a thing now um, uh, can kind of match what Galio offers because Galio could always go tank or AP um, but I mean Galio came out ahead uh, and then people would also go LeBlanc and Ari but Ari came out on top against the LeBlanc 64% um, of the time um, LeBlanc would I mean Ari was a better matchup against it than the Lissandra which we've seen in the past I believe in the last video I might have written it down as a matchup like how I did in the top lane where it was a matchup that didn't happen a lot but happened enough to warrant you know being put here um but yeah so I mean it was the Ari patch and the rise patch um we're still seeing more rise um either pick or ban um we're seeing in the top lane a little bit too but uh yeah so that's it for mid lane and now on to bot lane which I think you can guess what the first and most common matchup will be on that patch. Okay, now with bot lane, um, it, you could have guessed it, Aphelios Jinx, 88 times. Um, happened 80 or so times on 12.3 or 12.2, happened a lot the other time. Um, Aphelios Jinx has been the um, handshake matchup in bot lane. Um, Jinx clearly is here in every matchup that occurred more than 10 times. Um, and I, instead of writing Jinx every time, Jinx dominates solo queue, winning in every one of these matchups and three out of the four matchups in pro play. Um, the only time that it lost often was against Zeri. Zeri dominated it 74%. Um, if Zeri was left open, Zeri was first picked. And um, there was only, there. I mean, people had answers, but it was kind of like, um, I mean, Tristana, for example. Tristana, I believe, may have won four out of the nine times against uh, Zeri which is better than uh 70 i mean 36 percent win rate for i mean oh geez not 36 26 percent win rate for jinx against it so um yeah so zeri was the answer to jinx but as you see here um jinx 57 percent against aphelios 60 and 60 against kaysan zaya as people tried to answer um obviously only 10 matchups so you could say well uh if it was 12 maybe it's a draw or whatever um it could be closer um, and maybe those are coin flip matchups in the end when you see 88 matchups maybe it is closer to like you know both being in the 40s or whatever um, but as far as this went I think it was 58 to 30 in favor no 50 to 38 in favor of Jinx over Aphelios um, Jinx just dominated this patch um, I can't really describe it any better than that. It, it dominated the patch. She dominated the patch. Um, 
And if people want Zeri, Tristana was a good matchup against it. Um, we had 18 different champions used. Uh, Misfortune came in towards the end in the LPL. We are seeing it in the LCK now. Uh, maybe MF ends up uh, being on this list in the 12.5 video. Um, obviously, 12.5 will be interesting because there is a 12B and 12C. And I don't really feel like breaking that up. So 12.5 is going to be all-encompassing of all those hot fixes and bug fixes and things that they did with the patch. Um, but that'll be a while from now as at least the LPL are going to be on 12.5 throughout the playoffs. So will be a couple weeks before that video gets out there um but enough of kind of my end of video rambling i still have to do support so let's get to it okay and now for the final part of this video we have support um support looking a lot like jungle here there's a lot written here um, a lot of matchups occurred at least 10 times um it was a nautilus tom kench meta um everything here having nautilus or tom kench as a um, part of it except for Oh no, actually everyone has Nautilus or Tom Kench in it, so it was, you know, what do you want to do? Pick your poison. Um, most common matchups, both Tom Kench and Rakan, Leona and Nautilus being pretty much coin flips. Um, Nautilus having the slight edge on Leona in 27 matches, but pretty much a coin flip nonetheless. Um, in solo queue, that matchup is also pretty much a coin flip. Nautilus having a slight edge at the challenger level. Um, as you see here, Tom Kench dominates solo queue in all of his matchups um there is no matchup that tom kench does not have a strong win rate in at the solo queue level however in pro play obviously here being a draw against rakan and uh, leona has a slight um advantage over tom kench in 11 matches six to five um obviously next match could be tom kench it's a draw and tom kench actually you know is a pretty powerful pick in pro play and he is um a lot of people thought that he might not be um, earlier on in the split, but it has turned to a Tom Kench meta in the end. Um, as far as the Nautilus goes, uh, Thresh had a strong winner against Nautilus. People picked Star against it, struggled. Um, Karma was a coin flip against Nautilus. Nautilus having a strong win rate against um, both Karma and Thresh in solo queue, and Alistar having a slight edge in solo queue at a challenge level and a draw at a plat level. So um, pretty much kind of that's it for the support role. Um, it was, okay, let's go with Belios Jinx. Let's handshake the matchup. And what can we do in the support role? And it pretty much became a Belios, um, Tom Kench versus Jinx Nautilus, vice versa, however you wanted to play it. Zeri Nautilus is a common matchup. Uh, Aphelios Thrash common um, pair. Um, uh, there are 20 different supports picked um, in the uh, patch. So, I mean, we even had a Zach at one point. So things got a little interesting. Notice here, Renato's not really here. Renato was not a pick. Um, so, I mean, she was not, you know, uh, really effective on this patch. She wasn't going to be really used for a lot of it. I believe she was banned for some of it. Um, I don't think it was all of it, though. So um, people are still getting used to her. And now she's becoming a bigger pick, but I think she's still struggling on 12.5. But we'll see how uh, the playoffs fare as far as that's concerned. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you like this sort of content, um, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Watch the other videos. I have other videos over uh, the patches, 12.3, 2, and 1. Um, if you want to see maybe how they compare over time. I do intend during this break between spring split and msi to do a video where i combine all the stats from the champion matchups and say these were the most common matchups across the whole patch or whatever and uh compare it to solo queue um but yeah so thank you for watching like i said like comment subscribe if you enjoy this content and uh yeah hope you come back for more